WIM INSTRUCTOR IS ARRESTED AND FIRED, ACCUSED OF RECORDING A TEEN GIRL IN THE BATHROOM. GOOD EVENING, I'M ERICA FLY. TONIGHT, THAT MAN SAYS ALL OF THIS WAS AN ACCIDENT. BUT ACCORDING TO POLICE, VIDEO SHOWS OTHERWISE. POLICE ARRESTED CAMDEN FOR VOYEURISM AND CHILD EXPLOITATION AFTER AN INCIDENT ON SATURDAY, MARCH 18th. Broken Arrow police say Joshua Wan almost could have considered himself lucky. They say he ran a red light and caused a crash while drunk, but the crash wasn't serious. Greenfield woman is charged with neglect after her one-year-old daughter was found wandering in the middle of an intersection. Police say 20-year-old Alyssa Anderson was at home asleep with the door of the house wide open. Investigators say Anderson was actually babysitting her daughter. Anderson, Anderson's mother is the legal guardian here. Andrew Passwaiter says he suffers from sexomnia, a condition where a person engages in sexual activities while they are asleep. Investigators say the 15 year old girl told them she was at a sleepover and woke up to find Passwaiter fondling her on the couch. Cody Hicks and another inmate left the facility on Sunday night through the fire exit door. Now the other inmate was taken back into custody late last night. Hicks was in jail for failure to comply. The sheriff's department says it has installed a new lock on the fire escape doors. Police have released surveillance video of the same man seen walking through Macy's department store after allegedly recording another woman in a dressing room. When it happened at Forever 21, the woman was shocked and scared. With that, I'm glad to take your questions. April. Well, thank you, Sean. How are you today? I'm fine, and how are you? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, um, going back to some issues that are in the news, with all of these investigations, questions of what is, is, how does this administration try to revamp its image? Two and a half months in, you've got the Yates story today. You've got other things going on. You've got Russia. You've got you've got wiretapping. You've got no. We don't have that. You you you. you I know. On Capitol Hill. No no. I, I get it. But you keep. I I've said it from the day that I got here until whatever that, that there is no connection. You've got Russia. If the president puts Russian salad dressing on his salad tonight, somehow that's a Russian connection. But every single person. No, I, well, no, that's, I appreciate your agenda here, but the reality is, oh, no, no, hold on. No, at some point, report the facts. The facts are that every single person who has been briefed on this subject has come away with the same conclusion. Republican, Democrat, so I'm sorry that that disgusts you. You're shaking your head. I appreciate it, but, but, I, okay, but understand this, that at some point, the facts are what they are. And every single person who has been briefed on this situation with respect to the, the situation with Russia, Republican, Democrat, Obama appointee, career, have all come to the same conclusion. At some point, April, you're going to have to take no for an answer with respect to whether or not there was collusion. How do you change the perception be, of, of... We're, we're going to keep doing everything we're doing to make sure that the president, that what the president told the American people he was going to do to fulfill those pledges and promises that he made to bring back jobs, to grow the economy, to keep our nation safe, that's what he's been focused on since day one. We're going to keep focusing on that every and single Connie day. Rice comes Friday. Condi Rice did not support this president. Um, she did not go to the convention. She comes. What is on the agenda? And and how is their relationship? Has it healed since 2006 when he used a very negative word to so describe? So here's what I'll tell you. It's interesting that you ask those two questions back to back. On the one hand, you're saying, what are we doing to improve our image? And then here he is once again meeting somebody. Uh, that hasn't been a big supporter of his. Hold on. I, 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 no, no, but, but April, hold on. You, 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 it seems like you're hell-bent on trying to make sure that whatever image you want to tell about this White House stays, because at the end of the day, the let me answer. I I okay, but you know what? You're asking me a question, and I'm going to answer it, which is the president, I'm sorry, please 
stop shaking your head again. But at some point, the reality is that this president continues to reach out to individuals who have supported him, who didn't support him, Republicans, Democrats, to try to bring the country together and move forward on an agenda that's going to help every American. I'm glad you played it, because I am looking intently at it. Um, basically, my takeaway from it is what Sean said. Um, I'm a reporter. I just have to report it. Um, and I understand it's two and a half months in. There's a frustration. There is something we've never seen before here at this White House. And Sean has to do what he has to do. He is the spokesperson for this White House. But I'm a reporter, and I cover all things presidential to include what is presidential, those investigations on the Hill. It pertains to what's happening here. So um, with everything that's going on, with everything that's going on, that was the question. How do you revamp the image of this White House? Two months in, two and a half months in. I mean, we've never seen this before. There was no agenda. I have no agenda. I've been covering White Houses for a long time. I mean, I've even had other press secretaries from other administrations, to include Republican administrations, chime in today with me. So, um, you know, it's a friendly adversarial relationship. And I understand what Sean has to do, and I understand what I have to do. We're reporters, and we ask the questions, and I'm going to continue to ask the questions. Standing by their president in what they're calling an act of solidarity with their boss, none of the White House staff plans to attend this year's White House Correspondents' Dinner. President Trump announced he would not be attending the dinner back in February, but he wished everyone who attends a great evening. The White House Correspondents' Association president and White House correspondent Jeff Mason said that the board regrets this decision very much, adding that he made it clear President Trump and the rest of the White House staff are welcome to join the dinner. Trump has had a contentious relationship with the media, even calling some outlets fake news. The dinner to honor journalists and aspiring reporters will take place on April 29th. Don't see myself meeting with him, sitting down with him, um, believing in anything that he would say or even respecting whatever he would say. And it would not be uh, honest on my part uh, to go to any ceremonies with him or to pretend that I'm having uh, a decent conversation with him. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. I do not like this president. Uh, uh, he has defined himself in ways that uh, uh, cause me to resent him. We have dubbed them the Kremlin Klan. I've always said if you dig deep enough and if you connect the dots, you're going to find that there was collusion. And if there was collusion and that is uh, factually identified and, and um, supported, look, things are unfolding and things are happening just the way I thought they would happen, just the way I've kind of predicted they would happen, just be ready for impeachment. Um, well, what we know is that if there is an evidentiary basis for the president's tweet, it has not been shared with the public. So we'll get that out of the way. The, the allegation was very specific. President Obama wiretapped Trump Tower. Yes. Uh, there is not an evidentiary basis for that. Where it gets a little more complicated is there are surveillance methodologies that allow the collection of uh, hypothetically foreign to foreign communications. And to the extent that U.S. citizens are mentioned or collected in that, um, in those surveillance programs, they're masked. And uh, I think you want the information collected from a national security standpoint, but the masking's important. So with General Flynn, with the public reporting um, is that he was on mask. All right, that's a not only a breach of protocol, that's, that, that's a violation of the law. That's the felonious dissemination of classified material. And what Chairman Nunes' point is, I want to know whether or not other people have been unmasked, even though you don't know about it publicly yet. Interesting, but, but it will be known in the intelligence community. An Obama administration official was set to potentially shed new light on the Trump campaign's ties to Russia until her hearing was canceled. House Intelligence Committee Chair Devin Nunes canceled a hearing in which former Acting Attorney General Sally Yates was supposed to testify about her brief time in the Trump White House. I'm told that she had some very interesting things to tell the committee, to tell the public about when she told the White House counsel that Mike Flynn had in fact been lying to the vice president. 
Yates reportedly warned the White House that former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn may have been compromised by Russian interests. Flynn was later fired for hiding his contacts with Russian agents from Vice President Mike Pence. The Washington Post reported that Yates told the Trump administration her testimony directly contradicted White House statements about the Flynn investigation. The hearing was called off the next day. The White House denied it had a hand in halting the hearing, saying it welcomed Yates' testimony. If they choose to move forward, great. We have no problem with her testifying, plain and simple. The report in the Washington Post is 100% false. But in letters with the executive branch, Yates' attorney indicates the government tried to stifle some of her testimony by citing attorney-client privilege and presidential communications privileges. The investigation has also been dogged by questions about the conduct of Nunes, who was a part of President Trump's transition team. He reportedly took information related to Trump's unproven wiretapping claim to the White House without telling anyone on the committee. Adam Schiff, the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, said Nunes should step down from the investigation. So far, Nunes has refused. The House Intelligence Committee had been making waves. Just over a week ago, it's where it was revealed there was an active criminal investigation into possible collusion between the Trump team and Russia. The FBI, as part of our counterintelligence mission, is investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. The committee had been due to meet again, but amid controversy, that hearing was abruptly cancelled. And there are now claims there may have been an attempt to muzzle one of those due to give evidence. Pleased to be joined this morning by EPA... Sally Yates, an Obama official, stayed on as acting attorney general under President Trump until he fired her for failing to implement his stalled travel ban. The Washington Post has published letters from her lawyer to the White House in which she asks whether she's clear to testify. The letter states if there's no reply by Monday at 10 a.m., she'll assume there's no objection. The White House press secretary seized on that. The report in the Washington Post is 100 percent false. The letters that they frankly publish on their website all back up everything I just read. All of the letters are available on their website. I hate to give them the traffic. But the reality is, is that they specifically say if you don't respond, we're going to go ahead. We didn't respond. We encouraged them to go ahead. That seemed a clear answer, but the Washington Post also published a reply from the Justice Department telling Yates' attorney she may be subject to presidential communications privilege, constraining her testimony. The man who cancelled the hearing in the end, Chairman Devin Nunes, did not consult with his committee colleagues. He didn't talk to them before he was briefed on new information at the White House last week either. Democrats believe Nunes, who served on the Trump transition team, can no longer head an impartial inquiry. Given the severity of the issues, the importance of the issues, I really think it would be best uh, if he were to step aside, let someone else um, handle this investigation. Allegations of collusion between the Trump team and Russia remain deeply controversial, as now, too, is the investigation by the House Intelligence Committee into it all. It's worth noting, though, that the parallel committee in the Senate has a hearing on Thursday, and the most important investigation of them all, the criminal one by the FBI, continues its work well away from the cameras. Let's talk about the facts tonight. The facts about this White House and those close to it and ties to Russia all, we want to show you a flow chart just so everybody can follow along because it's confusing. There are the facts about former White House National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, a key advisor during the Trump campaign. In 2015, he sat next to Russian President Vladimir Putin at a black tie gala for Russia's RT propaganda network, which the Kremlin paid Flynn more than $33,000 to attend. There's the fact that during the campaign, Flynn had regular contact with Russian nationals and during the transition, he discussed sanctions with Russia's ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, and then lied about it to the vice president and others, and the fact that it cost him his new job as national security advisor. That's a fact. Then there are the facts about President Trump's son-in-law and close advisor, Jared Kushner. Fact, in December, during the transition, Mr. Kushner met with the ambassador. He also met with a guy named Sergei Gorkov, president of Russia's state-owned bank, VEB, in late 2016. Some facts about former Trump campaign manager, Paul Manafort. He worked for years in Ukraine for pro-Russian politician Viktor Yanukovych. Manafort also partnered with a Russian oligarch on business deals. And according to the Associated Press, he worked for a Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska to benefit the Putin government. 
fact, former Trump uh, foreign policy advisor of some sort, Carter Page, worked in Russia for about three years, was involved in deals with state-owned gas giant Gazprom, and traveled to uh, Russia over the summer uh, while he had been named a, uh, a close advisor to the president. Then, uh, that same month, uh, uh, Carter Page spoke to Ambassador Kislyak on the sidelines of the Republican convention. As you might know, Attorney General Jeff Sessions was the first senator to support candidate Trump. Some facts about him. He also met with Ambassador Kislyak twice during the campaign, despite testifying that he never had any contacts with Russians during the campaign. Michael Cohen is President Trump's personal lawyer. Two facts about him. Last month, he met, uh, met with a guy named Felix Sater, a Russian immigrant connected to the mob, accordingly. Mr. Trump also founded a grain company in Ukraine. Then there, uh, excuse me, Cohen. Then there are the facts about longtime Trump associate Roger Stone, who communicated with someone known as Guccifer 2.0 through private messages on Twitter. The U.S. intelligence community says that Guccifer uh, 2.0 persona was actually a front for Russian intelligence, who claimed responsibility for hacking the DNC before the election. So those are some facts. There are a lot more, but we'll just stop there because we do have a lot to talk about in the next two hours. And the ones we listed, they might be legal. They might be totally legal connections or nefarious. We don't know in some case, but we do know they exist. Those are the facts. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani has called for a global campaign against the growing trend of extremism and violence in the region. Rouhani made the remarks in a, in a speech at Moscow State University. He warned about the rising trend of violent extremism, Islamophobia, racism, and Takfidi ideology. The Iranian president said an international resolve is needed to eliminate violence and extremism across the world. Rouhani added that the fight against terrorism and extremism might continue for a long time. He stressed that bringing stability to the region must be the main goal of regional initiatives, saying Iran welcomes such plans. The Iranian president is set to visit his Russian counterpart later on Tuesday as part of his first official visit to the country. Now, concerns are growing by the day that North Korea could be about to disregard all the international warnings and go ahead with what would be its sixth nuclear test. Newly released satellite imagery shows a sharp uptick in activity around a key part of the North's nuclear test site. Kim Hyun Bin with the details. A leading North Korea monitoring website says the regime's next nuclear test could be imminent. Citing commercial satellite images of North Korea's Pungeti nuclear test site taken a few days ago, 38 North says three to four vehicles or equipment trailers were spotted near the entrance to the North Portal, and ground texture shows communication cables may have been laid. The website added the equipment would be used to initiate a nuclear test, collect explosion data, and process it. It also noted such activities were witnessed ahead of the North's most recent nuclear test in September of last year. The website added that water is also being pumped out of the North Portal, a move to keep the tunnel dry for monitoring. 38 North says there are no significant activities in other areas, meaning test preparations could be in their final stages. However, it added these images cannot determine exactly when or if the North will conduct the test. With speculation growing, the U.S. State Department has warned North Korea that such a provocation would have grave consequences for the regime. The department emphasized that Pyongyang needs to stop its provocative actions that threaten peace and stability. It also called on the regime to fulfill its international obligations and return to serious talks. Russia has uh, lashed out at the United States over its military buildup around the world. The Russian Defense Ministry has warned that America's global deployment of missile systems is posing a threat to world security. The ministry says such installments would trigger a new arms race. It also says the batteries are aimed at containing Russia and China. The comments come as the U.S. is uh, setting up the THAAD missile system in South Korea and sending more troops and military hardware to Russia's western borders. China has strongly objected to the move, saying the system's powerful radar can target its territory. 
The Japanese government says it aims to hold military drills before March next year under the pretext of exercising its right of collective self-defense. Tokyo-based Kyodo News Agency reported on Wednesday, citing a government official, that the Japanese self-defense force is seeking to carry out the exercise amid continued threats from North Korea. The latest move comes as the technically pacifist nation is aiming to gain a more offensive posture against military threats. The exercise, if realized, would mark the first such drill since a law to allow Japanese troops to be deployed overseas on combat missions took effect last year. Kyodo projected Japan may simulate its collective self-defense rights during the joint Washington-Tokyo Keen Edge exercise next January. Reports out of Syria suggest that the government and foreign-backed militants have reached a new evacuation deal. UK-based pro-opposition monitoring group says that the agreement facilitates the surrender of militants or their evacuation from Damascus suburbs of Madaya and Zabadani. The army has encircled the two suburbs. In return, people trapped in the militant-held villages of Fua and Kafraya in Idlib province will be allowed to leave. A separate U.S.-based monitoring group and sources inside of Madaya have confirmed the deal saying that it would likely be implemented next week. There have been similar deals in the past which led to the evacuation of some civilians from Fua and Kafraya. Russia has condemned the massive destruction of infrastructure by the U.S.-led coalition in Syria's northern province of Raqqa. Airstrikes in the past few days by the U.S.-led anti-terror coalition destroyed four bridges in the region and seriously damaged the Euphrates Dam. The dam controls 13 billion square meters of water in the Assad Lake from the Euphrates River. Its destruction would have disastrous consequences. Russia expressed concerns the coalition's operation in Raqqa may trigger natural disasters and a humanitarian crisis. On Wednesday, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley said that Syria's President Bashar al-Assad is a big hindrance in trying to move forward to find an end to the country's six-year conflict. She told the Council of Foreign Relations, I'm not going to go back into should Assad be in or out, been there, done that, right, in terms of what the U.S. has done. She concluded, but I will tell you that he is a big hindrance in trying to move forward. Iran is a big hindrance in trying to move forward.
Now, the new U.S. administration has once again reiterated support for Israel. The U.S. envoy to the United Nations says she would never allow the world body to bash Israel again. As we said, the days of Israel bashing are over. It never do we not have the backs of our friends. We don't have a greater friend than Israel. And to see that happen was not only embarrassing, it was hurtful. Nikki Haley made the remarks in an address to the annual American-Israel Public Affairs Committee in Washington. She criticized the UN for passing Resolution 2334 in December 2016. The resolution, which condemned Israel's settlement activities in the occupied Palestinian territories, was passed with the Obama administration's abstention. Haley says she has warned the Security Council members that Washington would retaliate against any new attempts targeting Israel. Later in the day, Speaker of the House of Representatives Paul Ryan hailed Washington's ties with Tel Aviv, saying President Trump and the Congress's commitment to Israel was, quote, sacrosanct. No, look, of course they won't be silent, but I, 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 we both heard what the House Speaker uh, of uh, the U.S. House Speaker, Paul Ryan, was talking about. He kept uh, ranting about how uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran is a uh, hegemony and is a threat to the region. Which region is he actually talking about? The region that his consecutive administrations led into chaos in Libya, Yemen, Syria, Iraq? Which region is he actually talking about? Does he really know who is fighting ISIS on the ground in Syria and Iraq? Who who have been dying in the face of this terrorism that was created by Israel and the U.S.? Yes, he does. That's the answer. But this is a propagating of lies. This is uh, this. I, I told you this is some sort of um, a media propagation of uh, of lies, sort of a publicity for uh, for uh, Israel. And at the same time, he was calling the P5 plus one nuclear deal as an unmitigated disaster. He, he just forgets the fact that it is not a bilateral deal. It was a deal between a P5 plus one and the Islamic Republic of Iran. And I don't believe that he knows what he's talking about because not once did he pinpoint where the disaster is actually. With that, I'd be glad to take your questions. April. Well, thank you, Sean. How are you today? I'm fine, and how are you? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, um, going back to some issues that are in the news, with all of these investigations, questions of what is, is, how does this administration try to revamp its image? Two and a half months in, you've got this Yates story today. You've got other things going on. You've got Russia. You've got you've got wiretap, and you've got no. We don't have that. You you you. you I know. On Capitol Hill. No, no, I, I get it. But you keep. I I've said it from the day that I got here until whatever that, that there is no connection. You've got Russia. If the president puts Russian salad dressing on his salad tonight, somehow that's a Russian connection. But every single person. No, I, well, no, that's, I appreciate your agenda here, but the reality is, oh, no, no, hold on. No, at some point, report the facts. The facts are that every single person who used to reach out to individuals who supported them, who didn't support them, Republicans, Democrats, to try to bring the country together and move forward on an agenda that's going to help every American. I'm glad you played it, because I am looking intently at it. Um, basically, my takeaway from it is what Sean said. Um, I'm... A reporter, I just have to report it. Um, and I understand it's two and a half months in. There's a frustration. There is something we've never seen before here at this White House. 
And Sean has to do what he has to do. He is the spokesperson for this White House, but I'm a reporter and I cover all things presidential to include what is presidential, those investigations on the Hill. It pertains to what's happening here. So um, with everything that's going on, with everything that's going on, that was the question. How do you revamp the image of this White House? Two months in, two and a half months in. I mean, we've never seen this before. There was no agenda. I have no agenda. I've been covering White Houses for a long time. I mean, I've even had other press secretaries from other administrations, to include Republican administrations, chime in today with me. So, um, you know, it's a friendly adversarial relationship. And I understand what Sean has to do, and I understand what I have to do. We're reporters, and we ask the questions, and I'm going to continue to ask the questions standing by their president in what they're calling an act of solidarity with their boss, none of the White House staff plans to attend this year's White House Correspondents' Dinner. President Trump announced he would not be attending the dinner back in February, but he wished everyone who attends a great evening. The White has been briefed on this subject, has come away with the same conclusion. Republican, Democrat, so I'm sorry that that disgusts you. You're shaking your head. I appreciate it, but, but, I, okay, but understand this that at some point the facts are what they are. And every single person who has been briefed on this situation with respect to the, the situation with Russia, Republican, Democrat, Obama appointee, career, have all come to the same conclusion. At some point, April, you're going to have to take no for an answer with respect to whether or not there was collusion. How do you change the perception I, be, of, of... We're, we're going to keep doing everything we're doing to make sure that the president, that what the president told the American people he was going to do to fulfill those pledges and promises that he made to bring back jobs, to grow the economy, to keep our nation safe, that's what he's been focused on since day one. We're going to keep focusing on that every and single Connie day. Rice comes Friday. Condi Rice did not support this president. Um, she did not go to the convention. She comes. What is on the agenda? And and how is their relationship? Has it healed since 2006 when he used a very negative word to so describe? So here's what I'll tell you. It's interesting that you ask those two questions back to back. On the one hand, you're saying, what are we doing to improve our image? And then here he is once again meeting somebody. Uh, that hasn't been a big supporter of his. But hold on. I, 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 no, no, but, but April, hold on. You, 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 it seems like you're hell-bent on trying to make sure that whatever image you want to tell about this White House stays, because at the end of the day, the let me answer. I understand. Okay, but you know what? You're what? asking me a question, and I'm going to answer it, which is the president, I'm sorry, please stop shaking your head again. But at some point, the reality is that this president continues. White House Correspondents Association President and White House Correspondent Jeff Mason said that the board regrets this decision very much, adding that he made it clear President Trump and the rest of the White House staff are welcome to join the dinner. Trump has had a contentious relationship with the media, even calling some outlets fake news. The dinner to honor journalists and aspiring reporters will take place on April 29th. Don't see myself meeting with him, sitting down with him, um, believing in anything that he would say, or even respecting whatever he would say. And it would not be uh, honest on my part uh, to go to any ceremonies with him or to pretend that I'm having uh, a decent conversation with him. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. I do not like this president. Uh, uh, he has defined himself in ways that uh, uh, cause me to resent him. We have dubbed them the Kremlin Klan. I've always said if you dig deep enough and if you connect the dots, you're going to find that there was collusion. And if there was collusion and that is uh, factually identified and, and um, supported, look, things are unfolding and things are happening just the way I thought they would happen, just the way I've kind of predicted they would happen, just be ready for impeachment. Um, well, what we know is that if there is an evidentiary basis for the president's tweet, it has not been shared with Wim instructor is arrested and fired, accused of recording a teen girl in the bathroom. Good evening, I'm Erica Fly. Tonight, that man says all of this was an accident, but according to police, video shows otherwise. Police arrested Camden for voyeurism and child exploitation after an incident on Saturday, March 18th. 
Broken Arrow police say Joshua Wan almost could have considered himself lucky. They say he ran a red light and caused a crash while drunk, but the crash wasn't serious. Greenfield woman is charged with neglect after her one-year-old daughter was found wandering in the middle of an intersection. Police say 20-year-old Alyssa Anderson was at home asleep with the door of the house wide open. Investigators say Anderson was actually babysitting her daughter. Anderson, Anderson's mother is the the legal guardian here. Andrew Passwaiter says he suffers from sexomnia, a condition where a person engages in sexual activities while they are asleep. Investigators say the 15 year old girl told them she was at a sleepover and woke up to find Passwaiter fondling her on the couch. Cody Hicks and another inmate left the facility on Sunday night through the fire exit door. Now the other inmate was taken back into custody late last night. Hicks was in jail for failure to comply. The sheriff's department says it has installed a new lock on the fire escape doors. Police have released surveillance video of the same man seen walking through Macy's department store after allegedly recording another woman in a dressing room. When it happened at Forever 21, the woman was shocked and scared.